So I think we can kick it off. Welcome back to all of our attendees. I'm sure that you know, it's clear that you know Brian, of course you do, but we also have our friends for a double shot for the coffee tasting to start. Brian, what can we expect from this coffee tasting session? So today we are going to uh, be talking about coffee, doing AMA style, but we're also going to be tasting Jiao. It's a Brazilian. Joao. It's a Brazilian coffee, and so I'm looking at the chat for my Brazilian friends to have an opinion on how this should be pronounced. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. That sounds brilliant. So everybody's ready at home. Boil your kettles. Prepare your aprons. Um, what do we? What else can we do? A little dance, a coffee dance. Do we have a coffee dance? Maybe not yet. Next time. Yeah. Guys, I leave the stage to you and have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, DevConf. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Andre from Double Shot Coffee Roasters, which is uh, based here in Prague in Czech Republic. And it's really great uh, honor to be here again, like, uh, like almost every year. So it's really great tradition uh, to organize for you the coffee tastings. And next time, I hope it will be in person. I, I didn't pay for that segue, but I'm really glad for it. Um, I'm going to paste a link in the chat, which is a survey link, to talk about, amongst other things, what we should do uh, when we return to in-person events. So it's five questions and anonymous. Uh, I'm Brian Exelbeard. Most folks call me Bex. Uh, I work for Red Hat, but here I am coffee person. I know absolutely nothing about coffee, so my main job is to badly make coffee on screen while the expert does it perfectly and to channel your questions out of the chat. So if you've got questions, please drop them in the chat. We'd love to talk about them. Um, pretty much anything is fair game. We don't promise to know any answers, but we'll make some up. Uh, and uh, today we're brewing this Brazilian coffee, um, which we, well, you have a pronunciation, so I'll let you say it. Joao Hamilton. Ah, Joao Hamilton. Is this Hamilton. The, uh, br the grower? Yes. Is it is a farmer. Oh, nice. Um, my understanding is you all actually do have a long-term relationship with these folks. Yes. We wanna... were... Go ahead. Talk about it. Uh, yes. we, we worked with uh, this guy like almost 10 years from the very beginning of Double Shot. So uh, I tell you later about this relationship and it's uh, really honored to present his coffee here today because it's one of my favorites. So uh, as we move into preparation, I wanted to let the audience know, for those of you who didn't uh, get the sample copy, the tasting notes on this are cider, uh, Merunkovi yogurt, uh, that's apricot yogurt? Yes. Uh, and Nutella. So I was kind of intrigued by this in part because of the first word cider. Um, I don't know that I'd encountered that in the tasting notes on a bag before. Uh, <laughs> so I really want to explore that with you. Definitely. And uh, we're both going to use French presses today. Yes because it's the easiest way you can brew coffee and I show you a few tips and tricks how to brew it better way so you can like improve your coffee on higher level. Well, I'm excited. Um, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started. But for those of you who are following along home, I have 50 grams based on the ratios we were discussing earlier. And I'm going to put 750 milliliters of water in my fancy uh, Swedish coffee maker that I purchased at Ikea. Um, but I'd love to hear these tips and tricks because I do this every morning, but not necessarily well. <laughs> All right. Well, so should I start? Please. Uh, All right. So the reason I chose the Brazilian coffee is uh, because it's on, on one hand, it's the one of the, uh, the most popular coffee among um, many people. And on the other hand, it's underestimate coffee. Uh, in uh, between the coffee professionals because they find it like lower quality and a little bit boring because the tasting notes are uh, usually like uh, nuts, chocolate and oranges. But personally, I love chocolate, nuts and oranges, so I didn't find anything bad about it. But it's uh, really uh, good to mention that Brazil is uh, the most uh, no, or the biggest world coffee producer. So the area is very huge where the coffee is uh, produced and planted. So it means the variability in uh, flavor profiles are like a really, really large. So, uh, yeah. 
Um, and this coffee uh, from Joao Hamilton is uh, the coffee which really changed my mind uh, about Brazilian coffee. Uh, I, I will introduce you to the Joao because we are really connected for 10 years from the very beginning of Double Shot. It's, we first met him in 2009 and Joao started to do specialty coffee in 2006. So we are really connected from the beginning of his uh, specialty coffee road. Can I, can I ask you to back up for just a second? Um, yeah. What's the difference between specialty coffee and, I guess, normal coffee? All right, yeah. Yeah, the specialty coffee, it's you have a range uh, like 100 points, uh, which are based on like cup score. And uh, coffee, which is above 80 points, it's like specialty coffee. And uh, it's about... 5% of core production, so reach the 80, 80 points. So, and basically, uh, specialty coffee should reflect its origin. So, the country from, uh, from uh, where is it, the variety, the coffee processing. So, yeah, and it's more transparent. You know the person who grows it. So, um, is it like a particular? Coffee is a bean, as I understand it. Is it like a particular coffee plant that becomes a specialty coffee, or is it the process by which it is grown and farmed? Yeah, it's 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 uh, the whole process and resulting in uh, like a green coffee bean. It's okay. uh, like the bean. It's a uh, like uh, it's a uh, it's a seed inside uh, like coffee fruit, which we call uh, coffee cherry. Cool. Um, while you're talking, uh, I'm looking at the time. We should probably start brewing as well. All right. So I have prepared my French press and I'm using this stainless steel uh, double bowl because it has uh, better temperature stability. So it uh, keeps the heat inside the water and also I can't broke it. <laughs> so I'm using 20 grams of coffee for 300 grams of hot water. So the basic ratio is about 70 grams of coffee per one liter of water. And then I'm using water, which is off boil. So it extracts the coffee, uh, the light roasted coffee much better. And it's good to use soft water with a low mineral content. So you can, you can uh, filter your coffee through the like filtration uh, kettles, or you can buy like bottled water, and you can read the amount of uh, uh, soli uh, the solids. Yeah. So and oh, cool. So together, so far we're on the same page because I use a, a water filter to yeah. take some of the hard water out of here in Brno, and uh, I've broken some French presses, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. So then I'll start my timer because it's good to keep uh, eye on the timer so we can reproduce the coffee like every day at the same time and I'm adding 300 of two grams and that's it just close it and keep it extracting for five minutes uh, right now how big is your grind size for five minutes yeah this is the really important uh, part of the uh, preparing the French press because many people are grinding two cores for French press. So for the French press, I usually grind the same grind size like for uh, brewed coffee, like for the filter coffee. So it's usually called like a medium grind size. Uh, yeah. So and if, I, I grind... if I've ground two cores because I ground before we talked, uh, <laughs> what's going to happen to me after five minutes? Le, le, yeah, the coffee will be a little bit like weak and watery, so and maybe a little bit sour. So if okay. you grind finer, the coffee extracts more, uh, more these uh, soluble, soluble, solubility things. So it will taste much sweeter and uh, with, with a bigger body. Yeah. Okay. Um, we we've got a question in the chat. Please interrupt me as we need to for the the. Brewing process, though. Um, I'm fine. I'm just uh, right now. We have uh, like four minutes. Uh, we can introduce uh, the coffee, and maybe okay. I will mention the processing 
because today we are preparing coffee which is uh, processed by natural process or sometimes sometimes it's called dry process or sun dry process and tomorrow we will preparing coffee which is uh, washed uh, or wet process and this is the information which you find on every coffee bag usually the name of the farmer the country and the processing and uh, the processing it, it has really a huge impact on the flavor and this natural process is really simple and traditional way how to process the coffee by processing we uh, we mean the way how we get the seed out of the cherry of the fruit so basically we pick the cherries and just put them on drying tables and dry the coffee on the sun so basically we are creating like coffee raisin so the the, the seed is uh, in, inside the fruit whole time in a contact with the mucilage uh, closed by pulp so the heat uh, start the fermentation inside the cherry and this fermentation gives uh, to coffee really arm really like uh, sweet notes really fruity notes and that's why we will find in our cup like the apricot yogurt it's caused by this process of uh, like fermentation in a fruit very cool um for those of you in czech republic i think i'm going to get this right uh the the dry process is sucha zapracovani yeah uh, so if you don't speak fine. czech um which i didn't and i asked about this so um and sucha is that word that means dry that looks like sweet if you're an english speaker so good luck with that <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll interrupt you briefly with some comments from the chat so that you can think about uh, how you might want to address them. Um, there's been a couple questions around grinding. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, what's your opinion on buying pre-ground coffee versus grinding it yourself? And I'd kind of extend that to be um, like, would you buy if you buy a bag of beans, would you grind the whole bag at once and then use it out over the week? Or would you try and grind daily and, and your opinions there? And then some questions around what kind of grinders you'd recommend Mm -hmm. um and they, there's been specifically some questions around manual grinders it looks like versus electric grinders yeah um so if you can think some about that is as you're 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 preparing to give some more comments here all right always like the freshly ground coffee uh is a better to freshly ground coffee before preparing because after you grind the, the coffee beans it starts like you know, like aging or it is fading in, in flavor so uh, I recommend to uh, buy like hand grinder, which are like today really cheap. And it's always good to choose grinder with the burrs, like with the disc or with the burrs, not with the blades. Because with the burrs, you have a better control over the uh, grind size. So you know, usually on a, on a bottom of the grinder, there is a, some screw, which you uh, loose or tighten and uh, it uh, it uh, set the burst closer or or, or further uh, apart yeah 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 and cool um kind of continuing that uh, there was one request if you can show us what you ground the coffee you're you're using today with yes yes um, I will do maybe maybe uh, after the brewing so I will grind the coffee and I don't want to disturb you by the sound of grinding. Okay. and people actually want to see what the machine was so yeah. they're, they're genuinely <laughs> curious about that okay Right now, a, mm -hmm. it's a five minutes uh, after uh, the pouring the water. So I grab my spoon and stir the coffee because on the top of the uh, French press, you have a like a crust. Mm -hmm. So, and there is also like a white foam. Maybe you can see it. No. no. <laughs> But uh, I believe you. <laughs> uh, there is a white foam which I skim by the spoon because it doesn't taste good. Uh -huh. So after the skimming, the foam, the coffee will taste much cleaner. And are you trying to remove grounds at the same time, or are you pushing the grounds in and then skimming the foam? There is just a little bit grounds because after the stirring, the grounds falls on the bottom of the French press. Okay, so, so there is just the uh, like light white foam. Yeah, that's it. Very cool. And Got then it. you put back the like the, the sieve or mm -hmm. the plunger, 
and press it gently down but not fully to the bottom i usually like uh, press it to two thirds mm -hmm. so i'm not squeezing the coffee and uh, it's like trapped under the sieve if you squeeze it up to the bottom it uh, it uh, escapes around the uh, sides of the french press and it's like a dirty in the flavor or in the taste aha uh -huh. because i've always just kind of accepted that my cups are going to have a muddy bottom at least that's yeah, the language uh, we've always used in america is that it's a mud spot on the bottom yeah this helps to keep uh the particle side the, the particles under the seat and just and then just gently pour the coffee into your favorite mug Let's see if i can pour a little here yeah all right, right now as you can see in your mug the coffee is much cleaner than usually well, I made I made a marketing decision for my mug this morning, so I can't see anything because I went with last year's DevConf mug, double branded with the important brands here in Brno. So, what should I smell? What should I be doing? Usually, we can smell like um, it reminds me like flo uh, like flowers a little bit because the variety which we are using today is Obata. It's really really interesting uh, variety it's called also like uh brazilian uh, geisha so really floral and pretty coffee so i smell some like flavors like dandelion okay yeah and usually if i taste coffee i taste it like from the hot stage till the cold stage because the flavors are changing in time and in the temperature Usually at the beginning, if the coffee is hot, you taste like the like the dark notes, like chocolate, nuts. And if the temperature cools down, you start uh, tasting the floral notes, like the like. At the beginning, I have like dark chocolate, like seventy percent chocolate. In the middle of the, the tasting, you get some acidity like uh like ripe fruits like the apricots mm -hmm. and uh, at the aftertaste it's it's like pleasing uh sparkling a little bit which reminds me the cider you know uh-huh and... okay because i was going to ask you where this cider should show up because i'm really interested in that that flavor note um, you're getting it's, some, it's, some... it's the little bit like a fermenty flavor in your, in your coffee. Okay. That, that's like, yeah, and that's coming from the uh, processing. And that's should I? Do you think I'll get that aftertaste at all of the temperature ranges, or mostly in the colder range? Uh, usually in the cold range. Okay. In in a hotter range, it's more like dark fruits and chocolates, and during the cold cooling down. It's more like fruit forward. I, I, had, I, I think I stumbled on this. There's a lot of people commenting on tasting the, the temperature range and um, really loving that advice. And uh, I think I stumbled on this a little bit by accident because I've noticed that like if I make a picture and then I take my daughter off to date group and I come back, that picture is cold. Yeah. But it's the second cup out of it is such a more interesting experience than the first cup was in part because I'm not in a hurry and running out to a tram, but um, also because the flavor notes have changed so much. I just never really thought about what I was doing, if that makes sense. So I'm glad you brought that forward. Yeah, usually at the beginning uh, or, or if the coffee is cold, there is a more acidity, which we in a specialty coffee really loves, but it must, but it must be the pleasant acidity not like uh uh not like vinegar but most like like ripe fruits you know right. ripe fruit is acid but also sweet and it must be in a in a balance the acidity and the sweetness i i'm going to take your word on it i actually love vinegar um and i'm not a big fan of fruit so <laughs> you know what do you want <laughs> but uh, actually uh if if folks are interested i put a link to our survey in the uh, chat again and there is a free form box so we could arrange for a vinegar tasting just saying <laughs> um 
So then I, I can show you the grind size. If you give me like one second. All right. Marzipan sounds really interesting, people. And uh, David, I look forward to seeing that in the tweet. And that is the sound of a grinder, my friends. That is the sound of a grinder. Andre, I had a question because I just finished my brew, but I think the dominant notes on my side is more chocolate. Is, is that, did I do something wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you get the flavor notes of Nutella. It's really, yeah. I think you brew it really well. <laughs> Can you guys see the grind size here a little bit? I know it's not. Would you mind maybe rubbing in between your your thumb and your finger, please, so that maybe we can see it in contrast with your... Right, so it's a bit coarse, but not too coarse. Not too coarse. It's like much, much uh, finer than usually people brew on a French press. Right. So maybe we would say not espresso fine. Yeah. But, but, but it's... Yeah, yeah, like... If, if you, if you uh, visit your favorite uh, coffee shop, and just ask them uh, to show you the grand size for filter coffee or for brewed coffee. That's uh, they usually do it. So, right. Yeah. I, from a consumer grade coffee grinders perspective, literally, would you just kind of go for the middle and then see what happens? Yeah. Because you know, like mine has dots that range from fine to coarse, and I think there's all ten of them, so that I can't ever have five. You know. Yeah. Or Usually try the medium, like in the middle, and then if you if your coffee tastes watery, just go finer. If your coffee tastes like bitter and like really full bodied, go coarser. It's the easiest uh, advice you can get. Sounds good. It was actually um, also. Go ahead. Sorry, Brian. There was actually oh, a couple of questions about manual grinders because some people said that they actually like to travel with hand grinders. Do you have a couple of recommendations? In chat, some people were talking about the Hario. I was mentioning yeah. the Commandante as well, which is kind of famous. Yeah, the, like personally, I love Commandante. It's a really well the German built uh, hand grinder. And the quality of the grind size, it's, it's uh, comparable to uh, like large coffee shop professional grinders in a small package. And, but it, they are quite expensive, but I think it's a vote of it. On the other hand, the Hario grinders, they are the most widespread grinders you can find everywhere and they are like really cheap and it's always good to grind your coffee fresh. So also these grinders uh, like are great for, for home brewing or especially for traveling because they are light and durable. Excellent. I know that we have a couple of minutes before the next session, but also another question that was in chat was around storage, coffee storage. Mm -hmm. Thank Tell you for catching you that. I had forgotten Tomas's question. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> because I, I store mine in a Ziploc bag because I like that yes. I can kind of close it. Does it make sense or is it silly? Yes, does it make sense? Our bags also have like zip, zip, Ziploc here because you can squeeze out the, 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 the air out, right. of, of, out of the bag. So because the air is a uh, like enemy of our coffee because it causes the oxidation of the coffee and the flavors and the aromatics is gone. And then storing the coffee, store your coffee in your shelves uh, in a dark and cool place, but not in a fridge. Uh, yeah. So it, it, because in a the fridge, there is a lot of humidity and the coffee is like it's roasted. So there is almost no humidity inside. So it, it uh, works like sponge. It, it's a, uh, uh, the, the the humidity goes inside the beans and they destroy it. But if you have lots of coffee, for example, from some uh, from from traveling and visiting your favorite coffee shops abroad, and you brought like six six bags of coffee, it's totally fine to put the coffee uh, beans or the coffee bag in a freezer. It helps okay. to conserve it, the coffee for a longer time, and then you can. Uh, put it out of, the, out of the freezer if you are out of the beans and uh, it's much fresher than if you keep it just on the counter. 
So the last question that I will ask us, both of you who tasted the coffee, what, what score, how good is this coffee to your taste? How much, from one to 10, what would you say? And <laughs> no, no. He's biased. He <laughs> roasted it. He chose it. Like, you yeah. know. <laughs> like, y'all think he's going to let me choose coffee? <laughs> If, if I score it on on a, on a like on the range on from one to ten, so it's like eight. It's really so, sweet. There's uh, some interesting uh, flavor characteristics, but I know there are the coffees they are like more more intense and more floral. Yeah, but they are also like more expensive. And yeah, this is like really affordable coffee and. Uh, I love the taste. Yeah. So I, I'm struggling a bit. I'm going to probably cheat and say eight too. Um, but part of that is because I actually brewed this longer than I brew my normal coffee. Right. Um, and so I can't decide how much of it is just better brewing process versus the quality of the coffee, but I'm definitely getting different flavors than I feel like I normally get from a coffee, which is great for me because my palate's actually terrible. Um, and uh, I was going to just address one thing right quick and say that there's a couple people who've dropped some additional questions in the chat. Uh, Petra is going to be joining us from Double Shot tomorrow. So I will take note of these questions um, and make sure that we ask her to address those as well. Um, and to my friends at Double Shot, uh, if she could bring an AeroPress as well tomorrow, that would be kind of awesome because people are really wanting to see that brew in addition to the French press. Yeah, I asked her and she, she definitely brewed the coffee in an uh, uh, AeroPress if you want. Cool. Uh, thank you very much, Damiano. I'm really glad you joined us because you have a lot more quality coffee knowledge than I do. It was a great banner. I appreciate you coming back. Uh, Andra, it was great to see you again. Look forward to continuing to talk to you all. Uh, and I will see everyone at DevConf, I hope, tomorrow for another massive coffee tasting at 11 with Petra from Double Shot.